NASA will be launching its first manned mission in nearly a decade next month. In a tweet Thursday, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said NASA will once again launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. The mission is currently scheduled to take off May 27. That's in partnership with SpaceX. 48-year-old Bob Benkin and 52-year-old Doug Hurley have been chosen to participate in the launch. They will take the SpaceX crew Dragon capsule to the International Space Station. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood joins us now from Merritt Island, Florida. Bill, I got to ask you first and foremost, wow, how significant of a moment is this? Well, you know, it's really hard to overstate it. Uh, as you say, it's been nine years since the United States has launched astronauts from U.S. soil. That's when the last space shuttle landed back in July 2011. And now they're on the verge of launching American astronauts aboard these commercial spacecraft. Uh, SpaceX is building one, so is Boeing. That one will fly later. Uh, but finally getting this rocket and, and spacecraft off the ground and ending NASA's sole reliance on Russian Soyuz spacecraft for basic transportation, that's a huge thing for NASA and I think uh, for the country. Bill, you say it's been nine years. Why has it taken so long to build these spacecrafts? Well, you know, NASA, it seems like when, when different administrations come in, the program goals change. And so there have been, there've been projects to send people back to the moon. That's what's going on right now, for example. But over the years, Congress has kind of been divided on what they wanted to spend the money on. So initially, it was a short-term uh, funding problem for the commercial crew program. And then both Boeing and SpaceX uh, have had technical problems to thrash out. They're about two years behind schedule at this point. Uh, but if they can get through the next 40 days, 39 days to May 27th, uh, they'll try to put all that behind them. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and they're very, very eager to get these spacecraft up in orbit. I bet they are. I'm just curious, you know, what, what made NASA decide now is the time to launch a manned mission from U.S. soil? Well, you know, there's only one astronaut aboard the space station right now, Chris Cassidy. He got there last week. And there's only going to be one astronaut flying up on Russian Soyuz spacecraft for the foreseeable future. In fact, Cassidy took the, the last seat NASA currently has contracted. They're trying to get a few more, but as it stands today, Cassidy is the last American that can reach the space station until these U.S. cruise ships start flying. Now, SpaceX has completed a rigorous test program. They tested their abort system back in January. All that went well. They think they're finally ready to go. Uh, NASA agrees, and so uh, they want to do this as soon as they can safely do it to make sure that there's more than one astronaut on board the space station for the long term. You know, if just one person up there, you really can't do very much research at all. And if the, if the Soyuz that carried Cassidy up, for example, had to leave for some reason, then there wouldn't be anybody aboard the space station. So they really need to have redundant spacecraft being able to carry astronauts and cosmonauts independently up to the space station uh, to make absolutely sure this enormously expensive laboratory uh, can stay staffed around the clock for the foreseeable future. So the mission is scheduled for the end of next month. What can you tell us a little bit more about what they'll be doing once they get to the ISS? Well, you know, it's really interesting. This is a test flight. And so it was originally only expected to last about 10 days, maybe two weeks. But because of this whole situation with the Soyuz and only one astronaut on board the station, uh, the NASA managers have decided to extend this mission for several months. We don't have an actual duration yet. They haven't decided. But Binken and, and uh, Doug Hurley have both been trained to operate experiments on board the station. So when they get there, they will, they will step right into the research program, operating experiments in the U.S. segment of the laboratory for, I'm guessing at this point, uh, several months. It's a maximum of 120 days. It'll probably be something and less than that. Uh, but they, they've gone from being test pilots for this mission to being test pilots and research scientists. So uh, they've got a full slate ahead of them. They've received extra training for this, uh, but it's definitely a change from what they expected when they initially signed up. You know, you mentioned that there are two Russian cosmonauts and one American aboard the ISS at this point. Are there any extra measures being put in place in spite of the corona pandemic here on Earth? You know, that's really interesting because they launched Chris Cassidy to the station last week. Uh, the Russians implemented some pretty serious uh, safety protocol, a lot of travel restrictions across Kazakhstan. There were far fewer people involved in that Soyuz launch than usual in the quarantine period for the cosmonauts and astronauts. And that's a normal thing. They do that before every flight. But this time around, it was extra strict. 
Now, when you come over here to the Kennedy Space Center where I am, where they're getting ready for this launch in May, uh, the Kennedy Space Center is actually at what they call stage three in their coronavirus response framework, meaning only essential personnel are allowed on the base. Uh, now, Jim Bridenstine, the administrator, says that both SpaceX and NASA are doing everything they can to make absolutely sure that the launch team, the people readying the spacecraft, the astronauts, that everyone stays healthy uh, throughout this processing. Uh, they're doing social distancing. People who can work at home by computer are. Uh, so they're taking every step they can. Obviously, if there's a major outbreak here in Florida, uh, then the flight would almost certainly be delayed. But so far, that hasn't happened. Uh, and they're keeping their fingers crossed on that front. Not, not just keeping their fingers crossed. They're doing everything they can to make sure that doesn't happen. Bill Harwood, what fascinating news and something to look forward to in the next month. Thank you very much, Bill, for joining us. Absolutely.